Hey, what's up everybody? Corey from My Two Cents, and I just got my Gear S2 Classic. So we're going to do an unboxing and quick overview. So you can see that this is a little bit different than just the Gear S2. The Classic means that it has lugs on the watch itself. We're going to go ahead and pull this out of its plastic, maybe. If I can get this thing open here. Perfect, there we go. And then we'll use a quick razor blade and cup, open the stickers on the side of the box here. And we can go ahead and slide this out. Let's take a quick look at the bottom. No cool information there. And right on top, as soon as we open, you can see we have the watch. So packaged like most other smart watches, with the exception of the Huawei watch. Uh, this is pretty close to what you see with the Moto 360. We'll take the watch out, just set it aside, just so we can take a quick look underneath and see what we have inside. So a couple of different packages. Um, looks like this will be the charge block for the device, which is pretty similar to what you see for Samsung cell phones as well. And then we have a couple other options here. What's this? This uh, Oh, hey, it comes with a smaller uh, wristband leather band. That's kind of cool. And then we have our charge cable. So that is a micro USB uh, and a USB uh, A side. And then we have our charger, a little stand. We'll have to see if this is magnetic or anything. Uh, so pretty basic stuff here. Uh, the cable will plug into the wall block and then into the back of the charger. And that'll be how it charges through uh, inductive wireless charging, uh, which is cool. That's my one disappointment with the Huawei watch was that it's not wireless charging. Uh, that watch is very nice. I just wish it had that wireless charging. So this, you'll get that wireless charging on it, which is a definite benefit. We have our instruction booklet here. Uh, very important, so we're going to waste a lot of time on it. Uh, let's just actually take a quick look at the watch itself and see what we get. So the screen on this watch is a 1.2 inch. AMOLED screen, so it's 360 by 360. You get a dual core 1 gigahertz processor. It has 512 megabytes of RAM, 4 gig internal storage, uh, 250 milliamp battery on the watch, which is supposed to last two to three days. Uh, we'll see how that uh, works out. You do get your Bluetooth 4.1. It does have NFC as well. And the interesting thing about this watch is it's Tizen based, uh, so it's not Android Wear. Uh, and we'll take a look at what the setup and uh, kind of some of the features with the Tizen itself works, uh, how that works. So it does have your heart rate sensor, it does have an ambient light sensor, uh, which is pretty cool as well. It does have a leather band only in the Classic, so uh, no metal link option at this point. Uh, one thing that's uh, pretty cool about this watch though is it has a rotating bezel on the front. So. Uh, you can use that to navigate the watch as well. So on the back you can see a quick glimpse of the quick release. We'll talk about that in just a few more seconds. And of course the art heart rate sensor uh, there as well. Now since it does have the lugs, you could choose to put a different band on it with the quick release mechanism and as well. So taking a look at the watch on the back here, you can see that it has a two nubs just on the leather band itself. And since it did come with the additional band, you can actually switch out this larger band for the smaller band. Uh, if you're looking for something a little bit tighter fit or you don't want as much additional watch band on your watch. So uh, something that's uh, pretty cool. Uh, something that we've seen what Apple do with their watch. So you can see that it's a pretty decent difference in band size uh, with this band that it came with. Now to remove the band itself, it's a, a pretty simple task. All you need to do is to push down on the quick release or push up. And these are pretty snug. It took me a second to, to get one to pop off. Uh, so you're not going to accidentally get these to remove. So pull down on the band. It'll pull the, the link back. And then you can put it back in the same way. Uh, but Sorry, spring bar. And use that to put it back on the watch as well. So nice and snug. This is a stainless steel watch. Now the display is a little bit smaller than you would see on the Moto 360, which may help the battery life. It also has a higher pixel per inch than the Moto 360. Uh, the charge stand has a, a magnetic option in it as well, so you can see that uh, when I put it on the back of the watch, it kind of sucks to it uh, to help you gain uh, that charge, and you don't have any problems slipping off or not getting it to sit in there correctly. Uh, so that's a pretty cool benefit as well. It also has an LED indicator light on the front. You can see it here. Uh, it's not currently lit up, but uh, that'll give you an idea of when your watch is uh, basically chargers turned on and charging as well. Now, since this is a different setup than what you see with Android, where I just want to give you an idea of how this works. Um, I have a Samsung 
uh, device so it already has the gear app loaded on it uh, you can see here that on the watch itself that once it loads you can see it's a little bit different than what you see uh, with Android Wear. Uh, you can either get the app from the Samsung store or you can get it at apps.samsung.com forward slash gear so you can put it on any Android watch and you can actually connect uh, the gear to it. It's actually pretty easy. Uh, so just loading the app, hit uh, connect to gear, it'll search for the gear. It'll do the pass key request through Bluetooth pairing. And go ahead and hit OK and it will uh, basically go ahead and just sync the apps, uh, download a little bit of software uh, that extra that's necessary for the device. And it's a pretty simple and easy pairing uh, for the watch itself. I was pleasantly surprised with this. Uh, so you'll see that it goes pretty quick. You can see the watch in the background is pairing as well. I'll go ahead and connect to the gear. And you have to go ahead and accept some agreements uh, to find your phone, that kind of stuff. Uh, if you want to use a reactivation lock, so you can go through and look at some of these options once you set it up. And then uh, you can choose the notifications that would be appearing on your uh, gear as well. So you can uh, choose to not. Now once it's paired and you go ahead and set up, you can use the click wheel to go back and forth. So uh, you can use it to actually read your uh, messages or your alerts. Uh, pressing the home button will take you back to the uh, page. Swiping down will give you access to some of the menu. And then uh, you can put your hand over it so it has the ambient sensor. So it does have that ambient sensor with a full uh, screen. So that's kind of cool. Now, the screen itself is AMOLED, so it's nice and bright. Uh, it's not as big as the uh, Moto 360. Uh, it's actually quite a bit smaller. And I was surprised the difference once I started looking at it. So I'm just using the gear to go through the apps on the device uh, with the scroll wheel. So that's a pretty cool little feature and it has uh, a home button and a back button on the side of it as well. So I'm going to give you a quick comparison to the Moto 360 so you can see the difference in height. So it's a little hard to see here on the wrist but you can see that the face of the Gear S2 is a little bit smaller but when you hold them up uh, lug to lug you'll see that the Moto 360 is actually quite a bit taller. Um, this is only supposed to be a difference of two millimeters um, in roundness of the device, but it looks like the lugs are a little bit longer as well. Uh, so that poses a pretty big difference. The height of the watches is exactly the same. So although the Gear S2 does feel a little bit slimmer, uh, you can see it here on the wrist and it looks pretty good. I was pretty happy with the, the watch overall and I think it looks good on uh, the wrist as well. Kaizen is pretty snappy. You know, if you're a Samsung phone owner and you're uh, into Samsung products, I think this is a, a great watch for you. Uh, definitely buy it. I'll throw a product link down in the description, so check that out. As always, thanks for watching. Peace.